Hey guys, if you have ever wondered how you should pay yourself if you are a self-employed barber or hairstylist, that is what I am going to be talking about today. My name is Jennifer Drew and I am a serial entrepreneur in the hair industry. I am a former hair salon owner and never been a hairstylist. Uh, today I am a financial coach, money coach, and a small business licensed small business tax professional that helps um, barbers and hairstylists specifically. So before I jump in, I do want to mention that last week I talked about how barbers and hairstylists should pay themselves. And I said that that's what I recommend if you are just starting out, if you're one, if you've been doing hair for one to five years. And just as a small recap, um, what I mentioned was that I made the assumption that you are either a um, sole proprietor or you are a single member LLC that has not told the IRS that you want to be taxed any differently and that every time that you take a withdrawal out of your business bank account um, then that is you paying yourself so taking that withdrawal and paying yourself or you know putting it into your bank account that's how you pay yourself you don't get a 1099 at the end of the year you do not get a W-2 at the end of the year so now, today, I'm gonna to talk to you about how I recommend people, barbers and hairstylists who work for themselves, pay themselves if they've been doing this for about five years or longer. And what I recommend is number one, not to be a sole proprietor anymore. Make sure that you are definitely an LLC. And then taking that a step further, asking the IRS to tax you as an S corp. So that is very significant because when you make that election, you are telling the government that um, it's a special way to, that you want to be taxed. And that allows you to put yourself, the owner of your business, on payroll. So if you, so let's take me for example, if I have Jennifer, Jennifer Drew Hair LLC, and Jennifer Drew does hair, then I am going to place myself on payroll and Jennifer Hair LLC will pay Jennifer Drew's salary. And that's, and then I'll get a W-2 at the end of the year for how much I've gotten paid. Um, and that's what I pay taxes that, you know, tax on. Now, the nice thing about that is if, Throughout that year, Jennifer, Jennifer Drew Hair LLC is paying me a salary. If I have a profit left over and I give myself that money, then I don't pay self-employment tax on that profit. So that is how you end up saving money. And that is what I recommend to hairstylists and barbers who have do, who've been doing hair for more than five years. That's typically enough time for you to have been making some money. You have a steady clientele and, and maybe you've been, you did that first year out. I'm just making some generalization. So if you want to do this before you're at the five year mark, go right ahead. It's definitely worth it for the tax savings. And, um, so yeah, so that's what I recommend the going that route and putting yourself on payroll. Um, I do this. I, I like this for one really big reason and that's because whenever um, you are a business owner and you're going after a large loan lenders make business owners jump through so many hoops um, I remember this because when I was buying my house this is my house <laughs> um, when I was buying my house um, I couldn't get it in the beginning because I only had my self-employment income and they were like, okay, we need to see bank statements. We want to see X, Y, and Z. You know, I was just like, guys, what is the issue? And when I sold my hair salon, I ended up getting a job in IT. I made less money than what I was paying my hairstylist. And I was, my hair salon was right next door to a barber shop. And I remember asking one of the barbers, um, how much do you get paid? And he told me, you know, how many cuts he did. He didn't know off the top of his head, but he was like, I do X amount of cuts a week and I charge this much. So we're, you know, I'm doing a calculation. And I was like, yo, you make more money than me. 
and making less money than the hairstylists that I paid. They were on salary and the barbers who were self-employed booth renters making less than them. I was able to qualify for $500,000 home, half a million dollar home guys, half a million dollars making less than what barbers and hairstylists are making. But when you are on payroll, your, your lenders don't make you jump through hoops. Now, you can supply a W-2 just like anyone else now. They don't know that it's actually your own company paying you. Um, so you look more legit. You're paying your taxes, so they know that. And, and you're saving money because you're only paying taxes on that salary and you're not paying self-employment taxes on that profit. So that is what I recommend for those of you who are um, self-employed barbers and hairstylists and you have been working for more than five years. So I hope that helps and I will see you next week when I come back with a different topic for self-employed hairstylists and barbers.